Hey guys, welcome to another video. Uh, this time, uh, following on from the last video where I showed you how to export from 3D Studio Max, this video is going to show you how to import into Substance Painter. I'll follow this up with a video how to import into Unreal as well, and also I will be creating a video on how to actually use Substance Painter and create your textures. This one, I'm just going to focus on the importing though. So we will switch over to the software view and let's get a little look let's see how is that looking everyone's okay nothing should be covered up there okay so before i show you how to import in the last video i spoke about a few wee things you should do when you go to import or when you go to prep your models for export from 3d studio max i said that you get some glitches and some things could uh, uh flip around and move out of position and turn inside out things like that i want to show you an old model of mine here that actually does some of those things just to show you what i was talking about i've made this little spaceship and what I did in 3D Studio Max was I used the mirror tool to copy the wing uh, from one side to the other, copy the engine from one side to the other, and a few other elements. And you can see here already how it has affected the model and how it's not appearing quite right. So what's actually happening here is this original wing is fine. That's turning out okay. But if we uh, zoom in on the other one, it's actually flipped inside out. So, uh, and it's also rotated it around uh, each of the individual parts and flip them around the other way. That is because this version of it, I did not reset the transforms and stuff like that. Um, what is happening here is that when you make a 3D mesh and you make a cube, for example, um, it only has an outward face. It is not visible from the inside. So if instead of a cube, I just had a single polygon, you can see it from one side, but from the other side, it is actually completely invisible. That's just uh, uh, the nature of uh, 3D meshes, the nature of polygons. So that's what's happening here is we're actually seeing the inside of this. So instead, uh, the, the polygon's been flipped. And instead of seeing the top of this wing, we're actually seeing uh, the bottom of the wing. It's been turned inside out. So uh, this is one of the things that you should be aware of can happen. It's happening here as well. This little um, wheel was duplicated over. Uh, this wee engine block was duplicated over with the mirror tool in 3D Studio Max. So the takeaway from that is try and avoid using the mirror tool where you can. Um, there's other ways of duplicating objects. We'll cover that later on. But also make sure that you do those little transform resets and things like that. So that's all I wanted to show you on that. I'm going to close this project. Uh, where we go? There we are. Uh, discard that. And we're going to start a new project. So assuming we've just opened Substance Painter, we get a blank screen like this. Here's how we're going to import that little uh, alarm button prop that we made last time. So if I go to File and New, I want to start a new project. So first thing to look at here is in Template. There's lots of different templates that we can use. Um, but the one that we generally want to use if we are making games is PBR Metallic Roughness. And... This is the one that defaults to, so generally it's fine. You can just pick that and we're all good. Next thing we want to do, uh, go to File, and here we're going to pick out the FBX model that we're going to actually paint our textures onto. So just click Select here. It'll bring you up a window. So where did I put my little alarm button? It's in here. Alarm, blah, 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 alarm button. There we go. So... Really, we could leave it here if we want. The only other thing we do, we set the project settings the document resolution up from 1024 up to 2048, just so that our textures are bigger when we make them. Now, this one, this is actually a different FBX than the one I exported in the previous video. So you'll see here that it says default material in the texture set list. Uh, as I said before, when you apply a material in 3D Studio Max, you're best to give it a name. Uh, this FBX here, I didn't do that. So you can see that we get, it just says default material here. Now that, if we had had multiple texture sets on here, apply multiple materials. So say we had applied a material to this plunger, and then a material to the, the main body of the unit. Uh, both of those materials would come up separately as two separate texture sets. Uh, but that, that's getting beyond. Um, that's getting beyond what I want to cover in this video. Really, that's all I want to do, just importing the the, uh, the model. And that's it, just that FBX comes in there 
and you'll see that we have that unwrapped and beside it is the the UV unwrapping. So at this point we can really just start painting on our model. One more wee thing we'll do uh, just before I close off this video. I will go down here to texture set settings and what I want to do is set up these mesh maps here. So in Substance Painter, what we're effectively going to do is we're going to be creating our normal maps, we're going to be creating our uh, base color maps, we're going to be creating our roughness maps, things like that. But there's a few other ones that we can actually import from uh, our original 3D mesh, or we can all generate from our 3D mesh. And that's what uh, begging our mesh maps is doing here. You'll see here that we have select normal map, select ID, select ambient occlusion, uh, etc, etc. Uh, I won't go over what each of these really are, but um, what I want you to do is click on the back mesh maps button here, and it brings you up this wee window. And these are a lot of kind of secondary maps that uh, we can all generate. So most useful one I would find for a lot of common game uh, props and things is the ambient occlusion. So ambient occlusion is the wee sort of shadows that form between between corners of objects or between two objects that are very close together. If you look at the corner of a room and you notice that the, the top corner is just that wee bit darker, that is ambient occlusion in action. Uh, the light rays bouncing around the room, uh, there's fewer of them can get up into those wee corners, so they appear just that wee bit darker. Uh, 3D modeling, 3D uh, rendering is all, as I said in the previous video, it's all smoke and mirrors, it's all tricks. So rather than actually calculating real light rays bouncing around, what we do for our game engines is we create an ambient occlusion map which just paints in some of those shadows and they'll not change in real time they'll just stay fixed as they are so for example uh, on this uh, object here the space and underneath the button um, where it's quite tight and close together and not going to be as much light appearing we can just automatically generate some ambient occlusion shadows in there that will always appear regardless of our other textures so back in these mesh maps is back in these uh, these kind of useful maps. Uh, we have thickness maps. We can use those for if we want a material to appear thin, or if we want to do like uh, subsurface scatter things like that. Uh, ID maps if we want to mask out different parts and different types of normalizing and things. Again, I won't go into detail with these right now. Um, all I want to do is get these set up. So what I want to do, we can set the output size here. These generally don't need to be as dense as our main uh, normal maps and our color maps and things. So we can leave that at 1024. You can put this up if you want, uh, make it 248 to match the main settings, but we'll just leave it 1024. Uh, the main thing we want to look at in this window is this little checkbox here. Use low poly mesh as high poly mesh. Uh, what we generally do when we're 3D modeling, if you were making like a complicated character, uh, such as an orc or a soldier or whatever, Generally, we would go into a program such as uh, ZBrush and we'll make a really, really, really high definition model where every wee strap and every wee piece of stitching is kind of modeled in. It's really, really high resolution, lots of detail in there. Far more detail than we can actually uh, realistically play in a game engine. There's far too many polys there. So what we do is we create textures, then capture a lot of those details. And what we do is we take the high poly mesh from ZBrush and we sort of project a lot of that detail onto our textures on the low poly mesh that goes into your game engine. So game engine takes a low poly mesh, but we actually create a high poly mesh just for creating loads of extra details. Uh, so in this case, uh, if this was a more complicated mesh, or if I had taken this model from 3D Studio Max into ZBrush and then put in maybe lots of dents and scratches and things like that and add a bit more detail, I could then use that high poly mesh to project some of the detail on here. Since I don't have that, since I only have one mesh, I'm going to skip that process and I'm just going to say use low poly mesh as the high poly mesh. And effectively what it's going to do is, if I just click this, it's going to say, okay, our original low poly mesh, we're going to take the same low poly mesh and uh, pretend to put more detail on there. There's not actually any more detail to be had because it's the exact same model, but just to get the process going, we're going to do this. We're going to use the low poly mesh as a high poly mesh. If we did have a high poly mesh on the other hand, we could uh, just pick it from this little button here 
and I would add it to this list. And then I'll project all that extra detail. We don't have that. We're just doing a simple low poly model. All you have to take away from this, if you just click that little button there, that's all you have to do. Uh, once we've done that, that's all okay. Don't really need to touch the rest of this really. We just have to click this little button at the bottom that says BEC, Default Material, Mesh Maps. So I'm going to do that and we can see that it is going to uh, BEC these out. It'll take a few seconds and make out each map. And what we'll see is when this is done, it will add uh, a little thumbnail for each map that has been added down here. There you can see it's just clicked over. And it's generated a normal map, generated a world space normal, ambient occlusion, etc. So uh, one important thing to realize is that we have to, uh, this is in a section called texture set settings. What that means is that for every texture set we have, we have to repeat this process. So if I have our default material, and then I had a, a glass material set, and then I had a material set for this plunger here, three different, pardon me, if I had three different texture sets, I would have to just beg mesh maps three times for each set. But simple little object, we only have one texture set, so that's all we have to do. We do it once, and that's that all set up. And at this point, we are ready to just start actually painting our textures on. And that's where I'm going to leave this video. I'm going to do a separate video on how you actually paint your textures. I'm going to leave this one here. Uh, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, please ask in the comment section down below. Uh, if you're a Substance Painter user, you've got any good tips that might be useful for my students, please, by all means, leave a comment. And I will see you next time. Thank you very much.